everybody and welcome to today's webcast, Social Work Management with Project Online, How to Empower Team Collaboration and Simply Getting Work Done. My name is Michael Tronto and I'm a Strategic Account Specialist at Wickersoft. I'm also joined on today's webcast with <clears throat> Jim Patterson, who leads in a business development role, and Matt Wiley, our product manager. The line will not be open for questions, but please feel free to leverage the chat module within your GoToWebinar panel to ask your questions. We will be monitoring the chat panel throughout today's presentation. Feel free to email either myself or Jim directly, and we will be happy to answer your questions. We'll be including our contact information at the end of the webinar. If for some reason you get distracted or pull, pulled away during the webinar, no need to worry. I will be emailing the recording and the slide deck of today's presentation. I will now hand off the webcast to Jim Patterson. Jim? Thanks, Mike. I appreciate the introduction, and thank you, everybody, for spending some time with us today. So let's get into the topic of social work management with Project Online. Today, we're going to be covering the following topics. We're going to be talking about work management concepts and the current landscape that's out there that drives the need for the things we're going to be talking about today. We're then going to talk about Wickersoft's one plan for Project Online and how it really adds the social work management dimension into the use of Project Online uh, by folks out there in the marketplace. We're gonna spend a significant amount of time demonstrating these capabilities live to you, and then we'll wrap up with summary, uh, recap, and then some next steps and special offers for you at the end. So with that, let's get into the subject matter. Today, there's all different angles and dimensions of work management. From even a hierarchy perspective, it all starts at the higher levels with strategies and people building strategic plans or enterprise architectures or have high level innovation or ideation stratas. New product development ideas and, and strategies that come into place and even just performance plans and budgets from a financial perspective. These strategies that are generally driven at the executive levels are the ones that drive everything else in the organization or at least should. Everything else that we do in an organization should be designed to uh, reinforce uh, or uh, realize the success of the strategies that have been outlined by leadership. Below that, we have program and portfolio management. So we have portfolios and programs of high-level objectives or initiatives. We have services or more operational work. We have application portfolios that have all kinds of work associated with managing and uh, upkeeping those applications and putting them online. We have Lean Six Sigma approaches, and this is just a partial list of the types of programs and portfolios that we have in organizations which support the strategies. And then it all comes down to work execution and down at the detail levels and the collaboration around that. The evolution of that really has all kinds of work, whether it be traditional internal IT projects, whether it's customer facing billable projects, whether it's application maintenance or service requests or incidents around the things that we're managing internally, uh, ongoing software development, which could be internal or customer facing or product oriented that we're going to market with, and then even down to lower level to do's and activities that people do to support the higher level work items that they're actually uh, performing. The idea is it gets complex. And a lot of times these things get initiated and come from different angles and there's other components to be considered when we're doing or structuring our work management processes. Let's just take a look at one sample of an enterprise work management life cycle where at the top level, you may have a more top-down approach where high-level enterprise modeling and the high-level initiatives and financial targets and objectives that the organization is trying to uh, uh, realize is defined. And then different uh, projects and execution uh, items and initiatives get defined that have to be sized and um, um, evaluated for their feasibility moving forward. And in doing so, as people size those, they may be actually using a variety of different tools uh, to do that type of planning based on the methodology or the preference of the user base that's actually uh, going to execute on, on, on these particular initiatives. All in all, though, we need a portfolio management solution like Project Online to capture a holistic portfolio of all these initiatives so that we can plan them, scope them, approve them, and then execute and track them through successful completion and be able to monitor the success of that or monitor how well the investment is tracking that uh, and, uh, leadership has uh, approved. The idea there at the end of the planning cycle, we decide what we're going to work on and that ends up being our portfolio of projects and work. Now, given the fact that we have a variety of different types of work in organizations now means that typically 
it generates over time disconnected systems and processes. Whether it be traditional project management that has its own set of tools, people may be using Microsoft Project or Project Online, they might be using SharePoint on a more of a task list basis or portfolio item basis, and many people use Excel to this day, which is really a disconnected desktop tool in and of itself. From an application management perspective, more software development driven or even product development driven, uh, people are using more agile oriented tools like Visual Studio or Jira or version one uh, or a myriad of other tools that have come on the scene. And then on the more operational side or service management side of things where people are logging incidents or problems and changes and things, people are using increasingly things like ServiceNow or Dynamics or Service Cloud from Salesforce. The idea here is this is just a smattering or a sample of the tools that are out there that people are using. And the ultimate piece that you know, we have to take away from this is that there are parallel processes that are generally not well connected, that do not have a common process or prioritization method, and we end up with silos of information. And an end user or a team member who has to fulfill on these particular pieces of work uh, has to monitor five, six, seven different places where that work may be generated in order to participate. Now, early on, uh, the Gartner Group thought that maybe the, the, the advent of the monolithic EOP, ERP system might uh, solve this need, but really they've gone more to a thinking of um, that it's best to breed tools, and getting the right tool in the hands of the people who are going to perform the tasks at hand is appropriate. And one of you know, the examples here is that, for, for example, at a portfolio level, you need something for people who are interested in creating decision frameworks and selecting and identifying specific projects that they want to approve and then tracking those investments that choose at a very high level. The people who are going to execute need a whole different set of tools. They might be using Microsoft Project or Project Web Access for waterfall projects. They might be doing task lists in SharePoint. They might even be doing things on a task basis in Wonderlist or Planner or as I said in Agile tools like we talked about before. The idea is that it's the best of breed tools for the right task, for the right type of work, is really the direction that uh, organizations are headed in that, where Gartner thinks things should happen as well. So the other aspect is the layer of different work methods. How do you find your ways through the maze of work methods, application, and their related information to manage all your work? Here, we're just looking at a smattering of different work methods or approaches or methodologies that people are using, whether it be Agile, Scrum, Kanban, or Lean on the left, whether it be Waterfall or simple task lists or using methodologies like the PMBOK approach or new product development, NPD, or maybe more Six Sigma type of approaches as you go through. When you layer into that the myriad of tool sets that people are doing across that, it gets to be pretty confusing, especially when you have leadership or PMOs that are trying to uh, ascertain and mash all this data up together to get a cohesive and coherent view uh, for the organization on, on where we're at and where we should be going. Now with that, Wickersoft has introduced one plan and one plan is a tool for Project Online that really provides a simple visual way to collaborate on work in Project Online and provide a lot of different capabilities to enhance what it already does. To that end, Project Online is a great platform for project and portfolio management. And if we look at the pillars in there, whether it be overall portfolio management, which means portfolio visibility into all the projects and initiatives, being able to capture demand, be able to do optimization and selection and prioritization, uh, those types of things are inherent in the solution. Project management with the core scheduling capabilities that are in there for Microsoft Project or Project Web Access, which has a subset of those capabilities in the browser. And then resource management, uh, we've talked about in a prior webinar that resource management could be high level capacity planning, detailed resource assignments on tasks, and capturing actuals on things like timesheets. And then the project collaboration around things like documents and artifacts and other items related to the project. It's a good fundamental platform with a good rich set of capabilities for end-to-end -end project and portfolio management. But a lot of folks are looking to simplify and unify these disparate work sources. And uh, Wickersoft is addressing that with one plan. Wickersoft's one plan extends Project Online to provide enhanced and multi-mode planning in the browser without a desktop application. It is a companion product to Project Online and requires the requisite licenses in Project Online to support it. 
but it provides all the capabilities that you're going to see today in all the popular browsers, whether it be Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Internet Explorer, Safari, uh, you name it. The idea is it's available in all popular browsers. One of the offshoots or side benefits is, of that is it offers the full capabilities you're going to see today to Mac users. And Mac users do not have access to a version of Project Professional on the desktop. So having these capabilities that extend beyond what Project Web Access in Project Online offers in the browser is a great net value add with one plan for those users. It also offers multi-mode capabilities, meaning you can plan waterfall projects, agile projects, Kanban, more lower level to-dos, more social approaches to, 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 to project management, and even more resource-focused planning can be, all be done within one plan. And it offers more simplified ways to do planning and tracking, like the popularity that people do as, uh, with entry-level tools like Asana or Rike or Trello. And the idea is to be able to dial it back and simplify for the projects that it might be conducive to simplify for and simplify those approaches. And we'll talk about that a little bit more today. It also provides a more collaborative approach for project team members by having online comment threads and task updates that can be requested on demand via people's email without actually having to go into the tool itself in order to provide those updates. Ultimately, the capabilities you're going to see today are from one plan are fully integrated and embedded in Project Online, meaning it's a seamless solution that just extends the capabilities and just adds to the capabilities of the rich core capabilities that are provided by Project Online. Now, here we're looking at a depiction in the graphic to show that it'll handle the traditional waterfall pieces in the browser uh, uh, in one plan. You can also do more social task management, aka like the Asana and Rike, where you're more simplified task-based planning with comment threading and simple progressing and, and, and tagging of resources onto tasks. We can also do more Kanban style approaches where we can do more of a card based uh, type of uh, approach to progress things across their various states or stages in the progress cycle. We can also do more agile backlogs, whether we have backlog hierarchies like epics, features, user stories, tasks, and then align them with iterations so that we can actually take more uh, iterative, agile based, uh, scrum based type of approaches with the solution. We can also do more split screen things. Uh, things that you don't get natively out of uh, Project Web Access from the schedule views uh, in there. So to be able to look at my plan or my schedule at the top here in this depiction with uh, the related resource allocations and capacities um, and whether or not things are over under allocated being on the same screen in the browser. Or split screen with higher level project schedule tasks and then lower level to-dos or activities that are more like punch list items to support those project plan tasks so that we don't have to clutter our schedules with these more granular type of items are things that are available to us all in one plan. Once again, unifying the work types and the methods all in one unified interface. Also, as we talked about in our prior one plan webinar, we can do more resource scheduling and engagements for capacity planning at a higher level and do that graphically within one plan. We won't delve into that too much today, but we do have a recorded webinar in our, on our website for this that you can actually go look at on demand. Just the collaborative pieces, being able to uh, solicit feedback uh, from people via email and actually have the updates come back in right into the, uh, the data here in one plan within Project Online and have it seamlessly update all the relevant pieces of Project Online. And any of the planning data, whether it be task-based data, resource planning data, and other prioritization stuff that we do within one, one plan, the idea is it can all be leveraged uh, in the more advanced capabilities that you have in Project Online. One that comes to mind is the portfolio analysis piece where you do what-if scenarios to determine what we can do within our cost and resource constraints and um, getting the most value out of our investment dollars by picking the right projects. All that can be leveraged from the one plan data that can feed into and support these scenarios. And then dynamic reporting and analytics. All of this flows into the project uh, online repository meaning that all of the data that we generate in one plan to supplement what's going on in Project Online is available through uh, Power BI reporting dashboards and analytics. So with that, hopefully I've set the stage for the concepts, and now I'd like to have Matthew Willey show you uh, these things in action uh, in one plan. 
Perfect. Thank you very much, Jim. All right. So I'm logged in here into Office 365. Uh, Office 365 has lots of different applications available, uh, one of those being Project Online. Um, and so I'm looking in Project Online right now, and I have a, a list of all the different projects that are going on that I have access to anyway, and status on those, and a timeline slash Gantt. And imagine I'm more of a project manager. I need to come in. I need to make um, some updates and or create my project schedule and manage it and uh, track the execution of that work happening in a social way. And so I can come in and I'm going to say I want to open this up in one plan, my white phones project here. And it's going to pop it open for me. And then we can come in and start making the different updates, changes, tracking, you know, whatever I might want to do. And so when you very first come in, um, you can actually start from a template. So there is a template capability in here where I can come in and save templates as well as insert templates. Um, and you can even insert little fragments. It doesn't have to be a full template. I need this piece. I need that piece. I need this piece. Um, and so there's some nice ways that you can quickly build a schedule without having to go and build it all from scratch every time, as well as utilize some best practices. Um, also from within here, um, you know, I can start to build this all out and I can utilize common things that you may be familiar with, like say Gantt charts. Um, so, you know, in my waterfall planning mode here, I can come in, I can see my Gantt chart, zoom in, zoom out, scroll to things, and it's all interactive over here as well. So for, um, you know, if I wanted to drag and drop and move things around or extend a task or whatever it might be, I can do that all right from within the Gantt as well. Um, there's also a timeline in here. So if I choose to do so, I can show my timeline and I can add high level activities. This timeline can be a, a roadmap if you want to think of it that way um, and add the different high level, either phases, stages, deliverables, milestones, whatever it might be into that timeline, um, like you might expect you would be able to do. Um, coming in and just filling out and building out your schedule and updating things is super quick, easy as well. You know, it's meant to be a very modern interface. It's meant to be lightweight, quick, easy, right through your browser. There's nothing you have to download onto your computer or anything. Um, and so everything in here is an editable grid. So I can just come in, make changes to whatever I need to make changes to. Um, I can drag and drop to move things around just by clicking and dragging and dropping around over on the side there. And even things like assigning resources, um, we try to make as simple as possible. So I can come in, I can start typing and it will look and it will find a name. If there's someone that's already on my project and I want to assign them, I can just do so right from there. Um, and there's actually also a find and replace option in here. So I can replace resources just for my selected tasks with a, a new one. Maybe I'm replacing this generic business analyst to Matthew Willey. Um, as an example, he's going to be my business analyst, or I could do that on all tasks. So I'll just go through and bling, 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 switch them all out for me. So goal is to make it really quick and easy to come in, make updates, create your schedule, you know, import templates, whatever it might be, so you can build this out, keep it updated uh, quickly, easily as possible. Um, from there, there's lots of other cool things that you can do. So for example, um, I might want to do what's called show activities. And what this does is for any particular task, in this case, I'm selected on the conduct planning workshop task, <clears throat> I may want to build out to-do items or what we call activities. I don't want to put these in my project schedule because I don't want my project schedule to get, you know, really big and, and ugly with all these different little tiny tasks in it. Um, and I don't want to track costs or time and, and other things at this very detailed level. So I just want to keep my project schedule a little higher level for reporting purposes. Um, as well as just easier to manage. But I don't want to lose track of these little to-do items as well that are related to it, these activities. So you can come in and you can add in different activities here and then simply just drag and drop to update status across the Kanban board. And once all the activities are complete, then we can mark off the task as a whole or deliverable or stage or you know whatever it might be that these relate to, mark that off as complete and move on and kind of continue to work down through my project schedule. Um, so lots of cool things you can do there. Uh, there's also a uh, resource usage option in here. And what that's going to allow me to do is right while I'm going and building out my project schedule, I can actually see down below here my different resources that are working on this particular project and how available or not they are right here through the window. So instead of having to go somewhere else or go into a report or you know have multiple windows open at the same time, right from my project schedule, I can see resource availability. And you can expand into that and get the details of which tasks or work items that they've been assigned that that you know, load is coming from. So that gives you a really nice way to make sure that we're not overloading people as you're project scheduling, instead of having to kind of switch back and forth. So it can be some, a nice way to, to bring that information into the mix. Um, 
So also within here, there's lots of great um, social type features. So for example, uh, over here, there's a comment button. So on any one of these particular tasks, I can hit the comment guy here, and you can see Daniel Williams said, do we have a place for this workshop yet? This interacts with email. So if someone comments something that you are assigned to or that you created that, you know, that you're involved with, um, then you will get an email notifying you, hey, there's a new comment. And then from there, you can click a little link and go back and, and make, uh, you know, reply to those comments and such, or you can do it you know, right through the system here. So you can start to have some communication streams going on, a comment stream uh, around this work, and we can talk about it. Hey, what do I need to do for this? And, you know, and it's all related right back to that task instead of separate emails or other separate streams of communication. And then we don't, you know, have a history and we lose track of, of what we may have already discussed for any particular task. So that can help kind of keep the, the communication aspect tied back into the particular tasks themselves. Also, if you're looking to get status on the items within here, um, you can do that really easily. Instead of having to email someone and say, what's the status, what's the status, or see them in the hallway, or whatever it might be, I simply select the task that I want, and I say, I want to get status for that selected task or tasks, and I want status and complete. I want to know if you're finished or not, or what your status is, and you can put in other things in here, like say percent done if I wanted that as well, so I can put in um, other fields there if I want to get other information from them. And I can say I want to send it now, and so it'll send them that, and then they can fill it out and get and get the status back right from their email. You just click a little link, you fill out a little form, you don't have to log in or anything, and that status then flows back into my project schedule here. Um, and everything's meant to be very collaborative. It can flow. Multiple people can work on one project at the same time, and people can be updating their status, and that can be flowing back in. There is an option to turn on approval, so you have to approve things to come back in if, if you choose to do so as well, so you have some options. But I can also automate this. I want this to happen every day at a certain time of the day, on these days of the week, um, you know, or once a week, whatever it might be. So I can utilize that if I want to automate this to automatically go out. I don't have to keep sending those status updates to people. The system will take care of that for me. Status flows back in, and that can help a ton just with trying to trying to get that status and information back into your schedule. So that's more of the, the waterfall side of things, but as Jim mentioned, um, there are multiple different planning modes within one plan um, that exist simultaneously. So for example, let's say I was looking for something a little more lighter weight, just more of a to-do list. I can flip over here into my to-do view and notice all we have is task name. We can throw in a quick due date. We don't have to even worry about start dates. We update quick statuses. And again, everything is all just editable right through here. We can assign people um, and or just mark things off. Just check them as complete when they're done. There's also a my work feature built into one plan where people can come in and, and update their status on their items, either through email like I showed before or right through the tool. There's a way to do that as well. So multiple ways that you can get that status in or the project manager could come do it as people update things. Uh, but it's just more of a simple to do list. You know, I don't need again. I don't need starts, finishes. I don't need all that stuff. Here's just the little things that I need to keep a list of tasks and then update the status on those as we go. Um, if I'm looking to work in more of an agile way, I can actually do that from here as well. So I'll switch to my backlog view. <clears throat> and what I'm looking at now is here is my epic broken down into different features and user stories below that. Um, and I can track the status of those and who's assigned to it. Uh, we can even start to utilize iterations or sprints and put people into those. Uh, instead of tracking hours, I might track points or hours or both. You know, it's up to you. It's actually, it's configurable. So you can set this up to be able to track work in different ways or both. Um, and have that all here. Um, and so go and then build out my backlog of all of my different work. And then I can flip this over into my Kanban board view and now what I'm looking at is those same items that we were just looking at over there but in a Kanban board view and so to update status I drag and drop from one status to the next here in my Kanban board I mean all the same capabilities we talked about are still available for example comments so I can comment right from here off of my Kanban board as well right um, so no matter um, if you're tracking a waterfall project a simple to do just task list project a backlog of work items that I want to manage in a Kanban board in more of an agile way. Um, I can track that all together and you can even do what we call hybrid projects. So some of it might be agile, some of it may be waterfall and you can do that all together within one place, one plan. At the end of the day, 
um, I can flip into my scheduler view and whether I'm using any of those different methods or, or multiple of them, I can then look across all of this work that's going on and understand um, who's working on what, who's over allocated, who's not, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so right now I'm just looking at the work for this project, but if I click on show all work, it'll actually go and pull in all the work from all the other projects that these people are working on. So it will really have a true full picture um, of all of the work you know, um, behind this. And so now we can see there's some reds, there's some problems here, you know, so on and so forth. Um, I could look at this by week, or if I wanted, I could, you know, look, you know, zoom out a little bit and look at this, say, by month or, or by year, or, you know, whatever you're trying to look at it by here um, and get a better picture of what's going on. I'm looking at it right now in hours, but I could flip that over into percents if I chose to do so. Um, and I won't go into all the details. Um, but the basis of it is I can see everything that everyone is working on right from here, whether it's agile, whether it's just, you know, just little to do ta tasks, whether, you know, the waterfall task doesn't matter, all rolls up together um, so that we can see that resource load across all this, which all feeds into project online. So then you could go and utilize the portfolio analysis module from a resource perspective and from a cost perspective, start to see the cost rolling up here. Um, you could utilize timesheets, whatever it might be, all of that. And so that all feeds back into Project Online into my portfolio views. Um, so here I have all my different projects going on. <coughs> um, the status of those projects, KPI indicators here, like overall health, schedule health, work health, et cetera. Um, and as well as some projects might be managed other places. Via integrations, you might be managing, say, projects in JIRA or VSTS or the Office 365 Planner. It all rolls together. So uh, we can utilize the tool and the tools that make the most sense for each project, but still have one centralized view of the projects, the status, uh, the resourcing, you know, so on and so forth, costs, et cetera, all together, one pane of glass, so to say. From there, that all ties back into reports. Um, so uh, we can do out-of-the-box reports we have for things like project portfolio status. So as you're updating your schedules and as you're updating your resources and your costs and whatever it might be, that all flows back into these different reports. Uh, so I can see all my projects, how those projects are doing, you know, when is it going to be done, what's the percent complete, you know, that's all flowing back into project and then into these reports so we can then deliver these to our stakeholders, managers, whoever they might be that need to get more information around this um, in a very analytical way. <clears throat> um, and that's just one example of a report. There are project status reports, there are, um, you know, so on, a resource management reports, so on and so forth, that you can then come and get in a very rich way and do things like either subscribe to them or view them through the mobile app, or I might want to print this out to a piece of paper or PDF or export it to PowerPoint. Lots of different ways you can then consume these reports that are reading from all that data that we were you know, making updates and people were updating their status. That all rolls up and totals into these different views here. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back to Jim for just a few more slides, and then we'll let you guys go for the day. Thank you, Jim. All right, thank you, Matthew. Let me get here, and can you see my slide? Yes, I can. All right, terrific. Well, thank you for that. Uh, hopefully, you guys saw a uh, lightweight, streamlined, easy approach to get planning data in a variety of different modes into Project Online and be able to leverage that in a variety of fashions. So from a summary perspective, hopefully what we were able to communicate with you today is that uh, work management includes a variety of levels, types, and work methods within many organizations today. And these are typically addressed with a disconnected set of tools and processes in most organizations. Project Online does provide a great platform for all PPM capabilities end-to-end, -end, and Microsoft Project provides strong tools for waterfall and more complex project structures. But organizations today do have other work management needs as well. Uh, whether they be methods or approaches and frameworks like Agile, Lean, Kanban, more lightweight projects uh, managed on a task basis, or more social approaches on a more collaborative basis. Uh, and Microsoft One Plan, hopefully what you saw today is that Project Online provides extended capabilities and multi-mode planning and tracking in the browser. Because it's in the browser and we put more capabilities in the browser than Project Online does natively, it makes the uh, ability of anybody on any device potentially, and especially Mac users, gives them uh, much more rich capabilities to feed into the Project Online environment. 
Uh, one plan is fully integrated and embedded in Project Online, meaning you can actually access it as an execution and planning tool just like you would by opening up Microsoft Project or Project Web Access. Really the same kind of process. And any data you enter in one plan does get fed automatically without you doing anything to it back into Project Online. So hopefully what you saw today is a, uh, some multiple modes and some more streamlined approaches in the browser. Just as an aside, Wickersoft, we are a joint venture and partly owned by Microsoft that was founded in 2002. We do have a global footprint and are triple gold certified in project and portfolio management, collaboration and content and cloud productivity. And we provide all of the staffing, uh, consulting services, business applications like OnePlan, for example, uh, and any managed services and education and training you might want. Consider us a one-stop shop if you're looking to evolve and really get better and improve in the areas of project and portfolio and just overall work management. We do this in all of the different Microsoft stacks. So while we focus today on Project Online on the left, we do the same types of things by bringing in the application development world in Visual Studio and that platform. We do a lot of digital workplace innovation in SharePoint, of which Project Online is built on a SharePoint foundation. And we also tie these things in with work management that goes on in Dynamics 365, whether it be things like professional services automation or field service management, et cetera. And all these things are based on the Microsoft Cloud and have a component of Power BI and analytics around it. So with that, uh, some special offers for us from us today is if you'd like a free PPM and work management assessment of what it would take to get you from your current state to get into at least a first wave of some of the capabilities you've seen in our webinar, uh, feel free to contact us and we'll do some discovery with you. Also, we can potentially support you in a project online trial with some one plan built in and have chaperoned Wickersoft support on that to guide you as a tour guide through that to make sure that you get the most value out of your time in, in the trial. And we gave a very generalized demo today. If you want something more personalized on a more one-on-one -on -one basis, more targeted to your organization's requirements and needs, we're happy to schedule that with you as well. Best way to reach us in general is at contact us at wickersoft.com for the email and someone will get in touch with you. We do have our website at us.wickersoft.com and specifically on one plan. If you go to project-online.com slash one plan, you'll see some more information about its positioning and capabilities. As I had mentioned, you know, you did register for this uh, live webinar. We do have a full library of on-demand webinars and upcoming webinars that you can uh, uh, register for, and you do that by going to wickersoft.com slash webinars. So with that, uh, thank you again for joining us. Um, I, I trust that you got value out of the, the, the information here today, and if we can help uh, dive into this deeper with you in any way, please let us know. We're here to serve. So have a great day, everybody.